Hello, today is Monday, June 29th, 2009, and today's topic is how gravity really works. In recent years, there's been a resurgence of interest in the old Lesage theory of gravity from the 18th century, which basically states that gravity is not a pull from within a planet or an object, it's actually a push from outside which is caused by the collision of high-velocity subatomic particles hitting the Earth. My twist on this old theory is that the origin of these particles and the property of these particles is actually caused by supernova explosions throughout history and throughout the cosmos. This, of course, is in contrast to the current theory of general relativity, otherwise known as curved space-time, which I'm sure you've seen a thousand videos on here on YouTube. To uh, go into a little more further detail about Lesage's theory, let's first start with one version of planetary fission theory. Some scientists believe that our solar system began as a large amount of space dust that condensed into a spinning ball of gas. A good analogy for this would be people clinging to a spinning merry-go-round. If the merry-go-round goes too fast, people will fly off. Likewise, if a celestial ball of gas spins fast enough, chunks of material will fly off of it into space. Some chunks were small and became asteroids, and others were gigantic and became planets. Some material was flung off hard enough to escape the solar system, and this is also the reason why the Earth spins, because we were thrown off a ball of gas whose remaining material became the sun. So the reason the Earth entered the Sun's orbit in the first place was because it was thrown off the young Sun's surface. But the reason we stay in orbit is because of the influence of gravity and the angular motion of the Earth around the Sun, just like an orbiting satellite that is launched from the Earth. Now the push of gravity from supernova blast wave driven particles becomes more equally distributed around a spacecraft that gets further away from a planet because he is struck from all sides, producing the effect of weightlessness, instead of only getting struck from above by particles if the spacecraft are still on the Earth. So to give you a little visual aid, let's say, for example, this was a planet. Okay? If you're a person standing on this planet, you're getting shielded from these subatomic particle hitting the Earth from below you. However, you're getting hit from subatomic particles from above you. Thereby, that causes you to stick to the Earth. Now, if you move further away, you're going to get hit with more particles from the side, causing you to lose weight. The further away you get, that would produce the effect of microgravity. This also affects two celestial bodies that come close to each other. The closer they get, the less particles hit from the sides that are facing each other and are proportional to the distance apart. Now, I believe that hundreds of supernova explosions are happening every day in the observable universe. And, of course, that's not counting the ones in the rest of the universe. And these are equally distributed around the Earth and any other celestial body, not to mention all the other supernova explosions that have occurred in recent millennia. These explosions rain down high-velocity particles, or we'll call them gravitons, as some people call them, which are equally distributed onto the Earth's surface. The combined pressure of all supernova-driven particles exert constant pressure on the Earth. So supernovas exert pressure long after they explode, not just the moment they explode. And this pressure is equally distributed in the cosmos and is just the same on any other star or planet in the universe. And that, of course, is directly proportional to the density of this celestial object. So the more dense this object, of course, the greater the gravitational force. Now, I'm sure there are minor differences in strength, but these are so small that us mere humans cannot feel them unless we use sensitive scientific instruments. 
Well, that, in short, is the Lesage theory of gravity. And I'd also like to uh, give it a new name and try and promote this. And I think that's one of the reasons why this theory never gained traction in the scientific community. It didn't have a nice, catchy name like Big Bang Theory. So let's go ahead and call it Cosmic Collision Theory. Or if you have a better name for it, just go ahead and let me know, and we'll try that and see what works and what doesn't work. Well, that's all I have for you today. Uh, go ahead and comment. Tell me what you think. And if you have any other alternate theories of gravity, go ahead and feel free to drop a line. Well, that's all I have for today, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.